Hey, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection, of course, as usual. Today, I would like to tell you about a certain type of graph, uh, which I encountered recently, and I kind of feel I like it a lot. So it's called the, the Rado graph, uh, named after mathematician Rado. Um, and it's sometimes also called the random graph. So not a random graph, but the one and only random graph. And we'll see why. Um, the, the way I would like to think about it is somehow it's like the law of large numbers in graph theory. So maybe we should get started and recalling what the law of large numbers is. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that most people kind of have seen this before, but it's actually pretty remarkable. It's extremely remarkable and applies to many, many different situations. And I just go for the one that is most uh, relevant for this video and some are also the most easiest. So I just want to flip a coin, kind of an easy setup. And we are doing mathematical coin flips. So everything is unbiased, so you know, blah, blah, blah. So 50% chance for hat, 50% chance for tails. And well, if you do one coin flip, it will be heads or tails. If you do two coin flips, there are also a certain number of outputs and so on. And it might vary a lot that you can see here. So number of flips goes in this direction and proportion of hats so from 100% to 0% is on the y-axis. And it starts off a bit crazy, as you can see, but eventually it kind of stabilizes uh, quite nicely here. And essentially it is, after 500 flips, essentially it is 0.5%, as you would expect it. Not quite obvious that this should be true in kind of a mathematical generality, um, but it is, and that's called the law of large numbers. In some sense, let's think about it as follows. Uh, so kind of coincidences don't exist at infinity. If you just repeat something often enough, it will come out kind of as the average if you want. So coincidences, luck doesn't exist at infinity, uh, whatever that means. In this case, just if you repeat uh, coin flips often enough, then heads comes up 50%, tails comes up 50%. You could do the same with uh, rolling dices, and number one will come out come out um, in the end in one over six of all cases or something like that. As, as long as you do it often enough, whatever often means, um, there, is, there is no luck involved. So no luck exists. Of course, that's what uh, casinos use all the time. So they have games where their outcome, the, the, the outcome, the expected outcome is good for them. So they just need to repeat the experiment often enough, so they need enough players, and they will eventually win anyway. Anyway, so uh, that's the law of large numbers. And yeah, so in essence, it's just saying at infinity, um, there are no flukes in. And I would like to be interested in seeing the law of large numbers outside of this very classical setting of uh, coin flips here in some very basic form of probability, and a very cute form of probability, actually. And what I would like to do is the following. I would like to consider random graphs. I'm not going to really into details what random means, in particular at infinity, if you have infinitely many random variables or something like that, you need to be really careful. I'm going to completely ignore that and just go with the intuition and the intuition in this case will get us there and is actually correct. So you need to make that mathematically precise, but it doesn't really matter. Probably as a mathematician, you shouldn't say that. But anyway, it, it that really doesn't matter. <laughs> um, anyway, here's a setup. I would like to consider a graph. And for simplicity, I only have simple graphs. Simple graphs just means uh, no loops, no one of those guys here, and no multiple edges. No, that's it. And I want to consider a random simple graph, a certain very easy form of random simple graph. I call that a coin toss graph for a very simple reason. So you have a certain number of fixed vertices. I don't know. Um, in this case, I have seven here, I guess. <laughs> and for every pair, you flip a coin uh, to decide whether you put an edge on it. Right? So a very simple idea. I show you um, an animation in a second, not really an animation, but at least something that produces those graphs in a second. All right, a very simple idea. You have a fixed number of vertices here, seven, for example, and you flip a coin. And uh, depending on the outcome, you connect the vertices kind of randomly in some sense. So it's kind of a coin toss graph. Okay, that's the setup. So just for every pair of vertices, we flip a coin. So it's pretty simple. 
Um, yeah, so let me show you the animation. So here uh, on the uh, in the first picture, we always have uh, 10 vertices. In the second, we always have 100 vertices. Um, I don't expect you to see anything in the 100 vertex graph. That's kind of the point. These graphs should stabilize in a certain sense. Uh, so the 10 vertex graph, well, this is the outcome of a Mathematica coin flip. So let's go to the Mathematica program. So here's the program, very, very simple. It just does a coin flip. 0.5%, uh, so heads or tails, on 10 vertices or on 100 vertices. 10 vertex is the top one, 100 is always the bottom one. Okay, and well, as you can see, this is the outcome. And whenever I rerun it, it will produce a new one. So let's have a look at the bottom one, it's a mess. Let's have a look at the top one, whatever it is. Let's do the next one. Oh, well, top one changed quite a bit. The bottom one is still a mess. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, top one changed quite a bit. The bottom one is still a mess. Uh, let's do the next one. The top one changed quite a bit and so on. The bottom one is still a mess and we can do a few more here. Um, the, the top one is quite different. You have one of those funny leaf type vertices. The bottom one is just always a mess. Um, and another one. And maybe I find something interesting at the top. Uh, so. As you can see here, it's always connected. It doesn't need to be because it's a coin flip experiment, but with 10 vertices, we already need to be very unlucky or lucky, depends a bit, uh, to make it not connected. But you see different properties of the graph. Sometimes you have a leaf, but may maybe not too often. Sometimes you have triangles and they all look reasonably similar while the bottom one is just always a mess. Um, I could be more precise about the bottom one. The point I would like to make here is that, well, with a few number of vertices, roughly 10. So here's a leaf example. Uh, it took me quite a while to get to the leaf. Anyway, and with 100, they kind of, they're different. They're different graphs, but they kind of seem, seem to stabilize. For example, the 100 graph, if you're really unlucky, then it could be not connected, but that is just essentially impossible because for every vertex you flip, um, well, 199 coins, and to make it disconnected, you would need to flip 99 times head, for example, and this is just not going to happen. So 10 vertex graph, it's, it's kind of more likely. And somehow there are some different other properties you could study, and they kind of seem to stabilize is n rows, which is somehow a law of large numbers for those graphs. And something really funny happens at the limit n equals infinity, which I found very shocking in the first place. And then if you think about it a little bit, infinity is very scary and it's really just a law of large numbers. Maybe it's not so surprising anymore, but from the outset, it's I think it's really surprising. The coin toss graph on n, which is kind of the limit here, is almost surely just one type of graph. So all coin toss graphs are almost surely isomorphic to one another. They're all the same. Almost surely uh, obviously means that we can't be completely sure it's still a coin toss um, uh, involved, but it essentially is saying with probability one, which is not saying for sure because there's some infinity involved, but it's essentially saying for sure. And this is really cool because this is saying there's this Rado graph, this unique infinite random graph. There's only one of them, right? So up to absolutely sure, uh, almost sure. And it's this unique graph. It's really, really surprising. The random graph itself with 10 vertices and even the one with 100 vertices, they're all different. They're definitely not isomorphic. Well, it's very unlikely that you get an isomorphic graph, but somehow in the in the limit, they're all the same because you now toss an infinite number of points for every vertex, which is kind of kind of really, really, really fun. Um, so that, that's where also the alternative name of this graph comes from. It's the random graph, right? Um, so really the and not a random graph. And that's kind of the really the law of large numbers here. So an infinite number of coin tosses kind of always gives the same end result. So kind of really this idea of coin tossing. It's really beautiful. I think this is pretty cool. And um, actually that graph is really, really scary in some sense. So all finite graphs are included in that graph in a very strong sense. They're induced subgraphs. They're not just subgraphs, but they're induced subgraphs. So the difference between a, a subgraph and an induced subgraph is, so for an induced subgraph, you choose a certain number of uh, vertices and you include all edges related to those vertices. For uh, So that's the induced one. And for the subgraph, you don't need to include all of them. So here, for example, this one is missing and that's just the subgraph. 
And this theorem is that this unique graph um, is actually contains absolutely every finite graph as a, as an induced subgraph. It's just really, really fun. So essentially, at infinity, all possibilities for coin flips that could happen actually will happen. That's kind of what it says. I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, so um, this was this idea that at the in kind of in a limit, there is no luck involved anymore. Flutes don't exist. Uh, luck vanishes, and everything kind of gets very uniformly. And in the setting of graphs, turns out that. But there's essentially a unique graph at infinity, kind of the random Toynkos graph. It's not random anymore. It's unique. And actually, all possible combinations that could appear, appear. And this was a statement about the induced subgraphs. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I also hope to see you next time.